Um, stories are an important way that we can see how the principles of God's Word uh, interact with the unique you know, parts and points of our lives. So I love stories. I'm a biography person. I love biographies. I love to hear people's stories, especially faith-based, you know, kind of, uh, kind of stories. Um, Todd and Deborah White came to me uh, probably a year or so ago, a little, maybe a little less, and said, hey, uh, if it ever works out, we would like to share our story. We would like to tell about what God has done in our life and done in our marriage and uh, they do have a wonderful story, a powerful story of, of God's redemption. They're going to share that with you this morning. Would you welcome to our stage this morning, Todd and Deborah White? She grabbed a box of tissues. You know where we're headed. <laughs> you guys can sit here. Yeah, it's too late to change your mind now. So, uh, okay. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you for your transparency and uh, uh, sharing. Everybody's got a unique story of how God's grace, you know, touches their lives. So, uh, Todd, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Maybe kind of the early, early part of your life. Um, yes, I'm from Atmore, Alabama, a little small town right on the um, Florida. Alabama line, just north of Pensacola, probably about the size of Quincy. Um, grew up there, had a great childhood. Um, we weren't wealthy, but we lacked for nothing. We had all we needed and had a um, great family and great friends. And um, I went to church uh, when we were young, and I got saved at a, um, a camp. Um, probably around five years old or so. Um, we kind of um, stopped going to church at some point. Um, but as got in high school, um, a bunch of friends and I, we started going together. And um, that was great. We uh, really enjoyed that. Started getting closer to God. And um, graduated high school, and a buddy and, and I, we joined the Marine Corps. All right. We, we, <laughs> Simplify. Yes. Amen. All right. So take, take a moment. Tell us about your military career. Where'd you serve? What'd you do? Um, I was what they call the ammo tech or BB stacker. <laughs> we uh, stored the ammo. We issued it out to the units when they were going out in the field. And um, I spent um, a couple of years in a, a nuclear ordnance platoon for security force. Um, spent a year in Okinawa, Japan, um, some time in, uh, quite a bit of time in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and I did a med cruise where we just floated around the Mediterranean waiting for something to happen so we can be de de quick deployed for great, us. Great. Um, so if you need some help with your fireworks display on New Year's <laughs> Eve, this is the guy to call right here. So, uh, so Todd, after the Marines, uh, come back home, you get married, kind of tell us a little bit about that season of your life. Um, yeah, I, I moved down here to, to Tallahassee area. Um, a friend of mine got me a job in St. Mark's Oil Refinery, um, got married, um, married for 16 years. Um, the kind of, we, we were going to church and everything, but things just kind of fell apart and um, that was a tough tough part of my life and um, another time when um, I started going after God and questioning um, why I had failed in my marriage, um, what I had done wrong and um, had a four-year-old daughter. Um, we were raising our only daughter and now I was going to be raising you know, her as a single dad, a week on and week off uh, custody. So, um, so like that, the, you kind of had a spiritual resurgence after, after that divorce. Kind of what, what, what do you think brought you to that that point in your life? Um, yeah. Again, just questioning. Was I doing enough while I was married? Was I going after God enough? Um, 
and a fear of starting over, and um, that was a big thing, um, you know, trying to raise a daughter um, as a single dad and everything. So um, that that was the biggest things I believe. Deborah, uh, thank you for uh, sharing with us this morning. Tell us a little about the uh, where you're from, a little bit about your family, the first part of your life. I grew up in a, in a very good home. Um, I was brought up in a church, um, Southern Baptist. The doors were open. We were there. Um, had very good parents, very good friends. Um, went to a Christian school. So um, I couldn't, I, I really couldn't have asked for a better childhood. No. So you're, you're 15 years old and you have a kind of a life-defining moment when you're 15. Uh, tell, us, tell us about that part of your life. Um, so I had went to Christian schools up until I had taught my dad into letting me go to a public school. And he was like, okay, you know. Um, so I grew up in a very sheltered home as far as... Um, certain conversations not being talked about. One was boys and girls. <laughs> um, so to say I was naive and people think, okay, at 14, 15 years old, how can you be that naive? Because the world is today, 31 years ago, it wasn't that way. There was taboo conversations. It was not talked about. So real quick, I want to say to parents, talk to your kids before they reach middle school. The world is talking to them, so please tell them. Um, so when I went to public school, um, I, with all those friends, and it was totally different, I, I met a boy, and um, my first boy, my first boyfriend, my first kiss, my first, you know, everything, and I got pregnant at 15. And it was a shock. I really don't, I really didn't understand even then the concept of when I heard the words, you're pregnant. I, um, I, I, don't, I don't know, I just, it was like, you know, this is bad. <laughs> um, how am I gonna tell my mom and dad? Um, so basically it was, uh, it was very hard. Um, so like the whole, you know, the whole family dynamic there when you have to have that conversation and then how it affected your social life, your church life, what was that next season like? Um, not, not good. Um, I remember... A Sunday night, they had called a special board meeting with my dad. And I remember my dad coming out, and he was mad. And he told us, he said, come on. He said, y'all look around. We won't enter these doors again. So on the way home, it was like, what, what's wrong, Daddy? Don't want to talk about it right now, honey. Okay. They wanted me to um, get up and confess to the church my sins. And my dad was so mad, and he told me, he's like, apparently, y'all totally missed the verses of, ye who are without sin cast the first stone. So the minute y'all get up there and confess your sin is when I'll have my daughter. So they ask us to leave. So I went from having all my friends and my church to being a bad influence and um, they were no longer allowed to be with me. And there was even some pressure like to end the pregnancy that you faced as well. Yeah, my boyfriend um, didn't, want, didn't want the baby. 
Um, so I remember my sister had taken me to a pregnancy center. And they were going to show me a, um, a tape. And I, I just knew I couldn't even go through the whole thing. And I walk out and I told my sister we get in the car. I said, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do, Teresa. I said, but I know one thing. I'm not aborting my baby. So from that time on, it was my dad. That was my family. I mean, they were, they, my dad was my rock. He really was. Deborah, what, what, would you, uh, what would you say to a young lady or even young man who's involved in a, an unplanned pregnancy? What, what would you say to them, kind of reflecting back on your life? You may think that, um, that you've, like, really blown it. You, you may be scared to death. Um, you may feel bad about yourself. Um, but the thing is, your life's not over. It's different, but it's not over. I look at my son today, and I couldn't imagine my life without him. And God always made a way. He gave me a good job, good benefits to raise, to raise my kids. So just look beyond the, your, your temporary circumstances and just pray. God, God, God always makes a way. He always makes a way. I, w I want to say, too, and I said it about a month ago, if you ever, if you're a young person, you ever find yourself in an unplanned pregnancy, male or female, you're involved with a girl, I want you to know that at the moment that that occurs to you, you never have to worry about the judgment that comes from this house, okay? We are a house of grace. We are a house of forgiveness. Uh, from I'll let you talk to the Lord about certain things, but you know what? We are going to love you. We're going to love that child. We're going to give a shower. We're going to dedicate that baby. I don't want you to ever think about ending a pregnancy because you're worried about how your church would feel about you. That is not this house, okay? Also, I, I think you heard what Deborah said too. Hey, it's a big bump in the road, no doubt, but your life is not over. Your life is not over. And then God brought provision for her and her, her baby through, throughout her life. So just that's a, that's a, a powerful moment. Deborah, kind of after, you know, after this season, you've kind of changed churches. What about your walk with God? Kind of where were you at? I mean, you've had a really big kind of issue in a church and uh, you guys have kind of moved on. You've had the baby. The next little season of your life, how was your, how was your personal faith to walk with the Lord? Well, if, if I can say one thing um, um, about that real quick is one church didn't handle the situation correctly. And my thing is to that is, you know, we're church people. People expect the world to hurt them. Not the church people. But we're human as well. And we make mistakes. When you don't handle a situation correctly, humble yourself. Go tell them, I messed up. And then let God work the grace out. Yeah, I was hurt and I was devastated. But I forgave all of them. You know, I mean, they're human. Um, and God gives grace, you know. So, what was my question? <laughs> <laughs> kind of your walk with the Lord after that? Did you find distance through what happened to you at the church? Did you come oh, yeah. to the Lord? Kind of, where, where were you at? Where was your spiritual walk after Okay, that? so, Dad, of course, was a big, um, he loved God. So, we got to another church, and this church was the way God Felt about it. They embraced me, somebody they did not know, with unbelievably open arms. So when you go through stuff and one person hurts you, it's, it's just amazing how God will bring someone else along to let you see, okay, this is really how I feel. So we're, you know, um, we found a really good church. Now, at that time, 
honestly, I wasn't really searching the Lord at that time. Um, it had been, it was really devastating what had happened. So the Lord really wasn't on the top of my priority list. It was, you know, I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, what kind of, what do I do? Um, my baby daddy <laughs> wasn't in my life. Um, so it was, yeah. I just, I, I wasn't, absolutely was not okay. where I needed to be. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit in your life. You're kind of in your early 30s mm -hmm. now. You've got, uh, got the baby growing up. You find yourself divorced and, you know, all kinds of things swirling from your life. Kind of where... What was going on with you at that at that point? I periodically, um, in those years, went to church. Things wouldn't work out. I wasn't really solely committed. It was kind of um, in the back of my mind. It was it was almost like let's see if this works, and it didn't work. Well, you know, it was. It just got to where it was more of a hardened type heart, to where it was like, well, of course, you know, kind of thing. Um, so. <laughs> I'm in, a, I'm in a marriage, and it's not the, not, not the best. Um, the best thing out of that was my, was, was my son, my second, well, my third son, actually. And um, so I'm getting a divorce. Um, part of me was mixed feelings. Part of me was happy. I was finally out of a not very good marriage. And the other part is total failure, really, total I mean, just a <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, yeah. you, you're pregnant at 15. I've got a divorce, early 30s. My life, is, the trajectory of my life is just, you oh. know, it's just bad. Not just, the way I had planned yeah. <laughs> yeah. at all. But, which is a good, you know, it's a good place. You know, sometimes we always have kind of the storybook kind of things in our mind. And we see our life go off track sometimes very early, you know. And, man, what do you do? Do you just give up and go, hey, I can never grab this back? I, you know, there's, I've, I've ruined every part of my future. But if that's your thought, I hear the story because there's, there's, hope, as, there's hope as well. All right, let's talk about how you guys, uh, how you guys met. So, Todd, kind of tell us kind of how this, this began here. Okay, well, um, as many of you know, I have a carpet cleaning business, and I do a lot of um, apartment complexes, and people move out, and they call me in, clean the carpets for the new people moving in, and um, one such place, um, the managers there, there's a husband and wife team, um, they had a pretty little mail lady that delivered the mail there, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they kept saying that they wanted to fix me up with this lady. With the male lady. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'd seen her once. As I was walking out, she was walking in and everything. And uh, when they mentioned it, I, I kind of remembered what she looked like. And I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they, they set us up, and we did a little blind date. Tell us about your date. Um, I walk in, it was kind of, it was kind of funny because I, I walked in at, at, before that point, I mean, I was really done, um, with, with men. I mean, obviously I was, I mean, when the manager men. of an apartment is trying to set you up with a carpet cleaning guy, I mean, we're, we're way down here, aren't we? We've run out of all other options. I'm like, I'm like, I don't, you know, I remember them talking to me probably about between four and six months, and I'm like, I know. I'm like, um, I don't think y'all quite understand. They're like, no, you don't understand. We think he's perfect for you. He goes to church and everything, and I'm like, hmm, okay, he's a church guy. Well, out of all honesty, I had never given a church guy an actual shot. <laughs> so one Saturday afternoon, they're like, what do you got to lose? What do you got going on tonight? Well, I didn't have my son. I'm like, fine, set it up. So I go there, and I walk in. I had, didn't remember him at all. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I told him, I'm like, I didn't. 
Um, so anyway, I, I walk into I walk into um, the restaurant, and um, I saw Todd, and I was like, "There's something about him that's so cute." I don't oh know. Lord! Oh Lord! I agree. <laughs> It was, it was just, it was cute. And I was like, okay, you know, and just, it, it, was, it was a pretty, pretty good night. Yeah. Good, good, good. And uh, so you guys started dating. Todd was attending church here. So some of you kind of remember that season and he brings the male lady to church with him. And uh, Deborah, um, you kind of started maybe feeling your place, getting kind of your spiritual footing back a little bit, opening your heart up back to the Lord after a really, really tough, uh, tough part of your life there. Uh, yes, we started going here. Um, rewind a little bit. I was not in church at the time from before my divorce up until uh, me and Todd started dating. And I remember different times of wanting to go to church, but I didn't know where. I was by myself. Still not 100% on trusting church people. Um, so we started going here. People were really nice. We got into Tom and Di's um, small group, and I started connecting with Di. Uh, she was really good. So through that and other people, it started, I started feeling a lot more comfortable. I wasn't really ready to, um, you know, get into working anywhere at the time. But it was definitely, I was like, this is nice. You know, this is, this is kind of comfortable. That's good. Always remember that. People need more than just a place to go to church. They need a place to land. They need a place to connect, especially, I mean, we don't know people's backgrounds when they, when they come, what they've gone through. Everybody kind of looks the same on Sunday, but they're looking for relationships. They're looking for healing. They're looking for places to have lunch. So that, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a great reminder to us there. So you guys get married. Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. Why are you <laughs> Are you yes. sure he had yes. a question mark on the end of that? So, uh, <laughs> yes, all right. that's where we went. So you guys, you guys get married, and uh, okay, you've been married, you've been married, both of you have kids, and it wasn't long after marriage that you guys had kind of a, a you know, like when when you when you're a blended family. Okay, there are always unique dynamics that go along with being a blended family. And if you're a blended family today and you have relative peace in your house and household, you need to be thankful and you need to thank God for that. But you guys, uh, there were some significant kind of challenges that you guys were facing due to your, the blended family situation and it started very early in your new marriage that this situation began to develop. And wow, over two or three years, this really, you know, kind of began to, to affect, uh, you know, kind of uh, affect the marriage. So at, at this point, man, there's some stress, there's some strain. Uh, they've been married several years here and, uh, you know, things aren't, aren't perfect. They're going to church, but, you know, they're trying to trying to make it through. And then uh, Todd, you know, at that uh, uh, particular time of your life, you've kind of had some issues with your spiritual life, and maybe you made some unwise choices and decisions in, in your, your personal life. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, um, I did, and um, I've heard it described as a... A slow drift and that's kind of describes what had happened I was hadn't heard from from God and in, in some time and I just I, I stopped praying um, you know I prayed over my meals but that was about it I, I read my Bible 
quickly as I ate breakfast in the morning. So I wasn't devoting the time. And it was really starting to affect me. And we had struggles. Yes, I, I don't know. That I'm sure that had something to do with it. But um, yeah, I started facing some temptations. And with where I was in my walk, I opened some doors and I became unfaithful in my marriage. Uh, no one knew except the ones who knew. And uh, anyway, it was affecting our marriage without, you know, us even without Deborah even knowing why it was affecting her walk with God and um yeah, and that that went on for about two at least two to three years um three years tops but um yeah <laughs> you know like when 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 your heart is divided and your mind is focused on other things in your marriage, you will never reconcile. It will never find healing and help as long as a part of your heart and your mind is, is divided, you know, a, a, away from that. So they already had some of these marriage challenges, felt some strain, felt some distance. And, um, and now, you know, like, you know, um, Todd just said the decisions that, that, that he made in his life. This was over several years that this, this was occurring. And um, um, you never felt good about it. You always felt, you know, terrible in your heart, this terrible secret that you've got. Uh, coming to church, it was just an awful time for you. Yes. Um, I... I always loved coming to church, even through this time, even though I wasn't, my walk with the Lord wasn't nowhere near where it needed to be. I, I always loved coming to church, and uh, when I was here, I would just feel so convicted and, and guilty, and at times, I, I would stop for a while, and, um, but it was always dragging me back, back in, um, because I wasn't doing, I, I didn't f fall down on my face down here and, and cry out to the Lord and, and ask him to take this away. There, there are times that we have to be bold in our confession, not just try to cover it up, but just really be bold and transparent. You know, Todd, you, you came maybe to this in a little bit different way. You felt like after several years of this, there was a point that, you needed to let her know. She had no idea what what was going on, but there was a point that you needed to let Deborah uh, know about this. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, um, unfortunately, um, we had come to the point where we de we decided, it, both of us, that we needed to separate. Um, I wish it had. It had I wish I had came to that decision before then, but it, it didn't. Um, we, one day we sat down and started discussing things, and we just said we need to put the house up for sale. And I, and I could feel this coming on um, that week before, um, and I thought I wanted this myself. But from that point when I started feeling this, I never felt I wanted that other relationship anymore from that point forward. Um, that, was, that was done. And we put the house up for sale, called Ken Saws. He's not doing that, but he did a great job for us. Um, house went on the market in three days. We had a contract, I think it was. And so things were moving fast. Um, you know, I suggested maybe to De Deborah that maybe we get canceling, and she didn't. She didn't want any part of it. 
Um, and if we had of, maybe if we went counseling and stayed together, um, I may have went back to the life that I was living. I think God's timing was, he knew what he was doing. So we separated. And at this point, I started doing the things I should have been doing all along. I started um, spending time every morning and every night um, in prayer and in, in the Word. And, um, you know, through this, um, Deborah was kind of mad at God because she had fell out of love with me and she had been praying for God to bring that love back and he wasn't doing it but God knew what I had been doing and she didn't and so um, you know she was mad and she was starting to you know pull away from the Lord some and, and that became my goal that's what I was praying for I was praying for her not necessarily to save our marriage but to just save her and bring her back and one night um, I wasn't sleeping much during this time but um, God was good he gave me energy every day I don't know where it came from but it had to be from him but um, and one night when I was sleeping um, I just got a quick vision of her you know, on her knees and uh, I immediately woke up and uh, that was the hope I, need, uh, I needed. And, um, but, yeah, through this, through spending time in prayer, and I started feeling in my heart, you've got to confess to her what you did. And when she told me, you know, that um, she was mad at God, and, she, you know, everything that just confirmed She's blaming God, um, and I can't have her blaming God for what I've done. And um, it, I didn't immediately go out and confess right away. Um, things got a little better between us. Um, we started talking. There were things are date, um, dating a little bit after the house had sold. We said, "Well, we're not going to divorce. We're going to." go out some and see if we can work it out and um, through this I decided I needed to help God out a little bit instead of trusting him and confessing everything um, you know I, I had to make her love me again first <laughs> um, and that didn't totally work out either <laughs> so um, after some time of us going out and everything. Um, like I said, she wasn't fully going after God. She was going to church some, um, but she wasn't fully going after God. And um, one, one day we were going to, one night we were going to go out, but something else came up and it really frustrated me because I wanted to spend as much time as I could with her. And, um, but anyway, I guess I expressed that frustration, and it didn't go over well. Um, she basically said that it just doesn't think it's, I don't think it's going to work out. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think it's going to work out. I think we need to go ahead and file for divorce. And um, so that night, well, not that night, but the following day I had to work, and then I, I came back home that night, and... I'd spent the whole day while I was working texting her and trying to make her see why I wanted to be with her, and it frustrated me, you know, when, when I couldn't. But um, that wasn't getting anywhere, so that night I sat down and I wrote everything down uh, that I had done. Good three, four pages front and back. Um, and I went and, and I put it in the mailbox, not the one at the yard, because I could go grab that and change my mind. I went and put it at the post office, but in the mailbox. And 
Man, I waited. <laughs> so, Deborah, um, you, you've got some strain, stress in your marriage. Uh, you guys are trying to make it work. Is it going to work? Um, you go to the mailbox one day, and you, you get your mail, and in there, there's a letter from Todd. Did you think that was a little odd that he's mailing you a letter? And then, like, you opened it. What, what was your life like after that? Well, I remember, um, you know, like I was, you know, after I'd been here at church and I was comfortable here and I was getting my life here, we had joined the Quinn small group at that point. And I'm going, you know, I'm going after the Lord more. Is our marriage is not good. It's just not good. And I remember um, this in Psalms 22. This was my, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night ceiling, you're silent. And so to the side, I put, Lord, hear, please hear my cry. And it just wasn't happening. And I didn't understand why. So I started getting really mad. I started getting really mad at God. And I'm like, you know... I'm a church guy. I'm back in church. I don't, at that point, I kind of thought maybe, maybe what people were right about what they said about me many years ago, you know, that I was bad. Um, so I started doing my party life again. Um, not my party life and other people's party life may not be the same. I mean, I wasn't, you know, getting drunk every night. I was drinking. But I wasn't getting drunk every night or anything like that. And just I wasn't. I didn't want to talk about God. I just didn't. And, um, you know, we're, I, I didn't love Todd anymore. And I remember when he had come home and I'm like, Counseling. That was like something we should have done a year ago. You know, at that point, I'm, I'm done. So um, I'm ready for a divorce at that time. And I'm just ready, you know, to move on. And Ken was very good, by the way. <laughs> um, our house sold, and I'm like, okay, well, this is just lining up just perfect. So... I remember one night, a defining moment after we had talked, that um, me and Todd are both staying at the house. I'm in one room and he's in the other. And I'm out with my friends and it just hit me. This isn't where you belong. So I said, I just told him, I'm going home. They're like, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. So I go home and I walk in the door and I go to walk to my room. And I just felt this feeling, and I was like, Todd, are you still awake? Yeah. I'm like, um, do, do you think maybe I can just, you know, uh, come, come in there to sleep tonight? I just don't want to be alone. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. So I remember, you know, crawling in and just feeling so comfortable and so at peace. That was a defining moment to where I was like, that marriage may not be over, you know. So we still sold the house. We both got our own places. <laughs> Todd had gone from us not really, I mean, we commu communicated, but you know, as just a formalities type stuff to really going for force, like wanting my full attention when I wasn't at work, even when I was at work. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, 
But then part of him was like, he was still losing weight. He was still acting weird. And I'm like, if this is what it's going to be, I was obviously mistaken. So that night, like you said, I was like, I just don't think this is going to work. I'm just, this, is, this is draining at this point. So I get the letter. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, okay, Todd's texting me. I mean, Todd emailed me, okay. So I get my stuff done. I go in there and I open up the letter. I was not prepared for what that letter would say. To say I was devastated um, is an understatement. I just remember I, I was on the ground and I was like, why? Why did you let this happen to me, God? Why did you let this happen to me? I called in sick to work, you know, I'm like, you know, I was a basket case. And I just remember just really having uh, not very nice conversations with God. <laughs> and I remember one night I was <clears throat> trying to go to sleep and I heard the man who hurt you, I'm going to use heal you. And I was like, you know, oh, that's Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, definitely don't need you right now. So that, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't a mean, it was just, it was very different and I was like, no, you ain't either. <laughs> I, was, I didn't want, um, I never wanted to see Todd again. I really had anger. I had anger. I was, I was angry with God. I was angry with Todd. How in the world am I going to get over this? Um, it was, I was a lot of things have happened in my life, you know, and a lot of stuff I caused. This one I didn't cause. I knew I didn't. And I was like, um, this broke me. It really broke me. So that's been several years ago, mm -hmm. okay? You guys are back together. You've living together, and you're, you're happy. Um, even to the point where you felt comfortable saying in front of our church your entire, your entire story. So, like, how are you guys doing today? What, maybe what are some things that you learned to kind of piece it back when it's, when it's been shattered, Todd? Well, we're there now, but um, it took a lot. A lot to get there, um, a lot, you know, I probably apologize in, in the thousands of times. Um, um, it was, I told her, she didn't want to talk to me, but I told her, you know, if you ever want to ask questions or anything, I, I'll, I'll answer anything you want, I'll tell you. And some reason she just kept texting me or calling me back and um, when I confessed to her when, when I wrote it all down put it in the mail I had a piece about it I, I felt God's going to take care of this um, and you know it, it was um, it was rocky for a while it, but I had 
I had done this to her. And so just had to be really careful. Uh, she had trust issues, of course. Um, and any little thing could, um, you know, bring that back up. And that was fine. That's, that was part of the healing. And I had, I had to just I had to be humble. I had to be apologetic. I had to be there for her and show her that I'm not going to do that anymore ever again. I gave her access to my business accounts and credit cards. She has all that. She doesn't want to live that way, but it's there if she wants to look at, at it. Um, but Slowly, God started to heal. Um, I started investing time. We went and seen uh, a pastor. Um, I think you told us you don't do, you know, within the church, marriage counseling. Um, we saw another pastor, Pastor Tony Kelly. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> um, he told us, he gave us some great advice. Um, we should start praying together and reading the word together. Um, we have our little personal devotion times in the morning, but we, before we leave, um, we pray together. Before we go to bed, we do um, a devotional, um, usually a marriage devotional, to read some chapters from, from the Bible, and we pray together again. And um, that's... That's helped heal us. That's, that's great. Worship team, you guys can come. Um, Todd, what, what, what would you say to men? What have you learned about keeping yourself strong, pure, keeping your mind right? You learned a hard lesson, but what, what, what have you learned maybe that you can share? Yes, it's, um, it's not going to be any groundbreaking thing. It's... You've got to spend time with the Lord. You've got to develop a personal relationship. It's, it's just like the Old Testament when the Israelites, when they were following God's commands, they were doing his laws. God was with them. God protected them. Uh, he gave them peace. Um, when they strayed and started having idols, um, there was not peace. There was... Uh, the the nation moved away, and that's it. You've got to you've got to invest. You've got to commit to spending time with the Lord. You've got to commit to um, praying with your wife. I hope I don't get any uh, mean looks from that, but that's what you need to do. Um, I. One of our marriage devotional last night um, was about faith and fear. Uh, fear motivates you to act according to your emotions and try to force results. Faith is just the opposite. Faith tells you to believe God, do the right thing, and trust Him for the results. Instead of acting on your emotions, you choose to pray and place your confidence in the Lord. Um, that would be my advice. Yeah. Deborah, what would you say to someone out there that goes, man, our, our marriage is rocky. I'm not sure we can make it. What would you say to him as encouragement this morning? Um, you know, my biggest thing is there's nothing, uh, like the song we sung, there's nothing more powerful than God. There's nothing stronger and when two people, even if you've messed up, you know, the way that me and Todd did, if two people are in their marriage, it doesn't matter what you've done. God distributes grace for the circumstances in your life. And when he knows the hearts and he knew our hearts and we were doing his will, we had his power to put the marriage back together. So when you 
think that it's too much and you can't do it, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself, but he can, he can put it back together. You really don't need to listen to the outside world or anything like that. You just listen to him. And the best advice is like Todd said, it was what Brother Tony told us. If this isn't going to be the center of your marriage, it's over for people like me and Todd. There's windows that the devil can always get in. So the minute that we think that we are strong enough to where we don't need God, the minute will be over. But God put a new verse in, in my life in Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I put to the side, thank you, Jesus. I never knew the kind of marriage that Todd and I share now. And if you have a mediocre marriage, well, that's up to you. But if you want a really strong marriage, the kind of love that only God can give people, you base your life on him and this word, and he'll give you rivers of living water. That's right. Well, Todd and Deborah, thank you uh, for your transparency. Sometimes we do share your story. Somebody's broken a leg. You know, this is completely different, you know, here. And uh, we, we appreciate uh, your transparency today. Uh, they're the ones that approached me and said, hey, I, we feel like there can be some value in our story. And on behalf of our church, we just want to say thank you for sharing your story with us this morning. Would you give them a hand today? Listen, um, great transparency here. I just want to say before we pray and we go today, uh, you know, sometimes if your life is falling apart, it's because of the foundation that you've built it on. You can go point lots of different places, but, you know, sometimes, you know, it's the wrong foundation. Jesus said... You know, if you build on the foundation of faith, when winds and rains come, you know, you're, you're going to, it's going to stand. It's going to make it. You're going to make it through that. If you've built on something else, then when winds and rains come, then you, you see your life kind of, kind of, you know, kind of pulling apart. If you're here today and, um, you know, um, and you, you feel like there's some issues in your marriage. I just want to say, this is probably the worst situation that I've seen in pastoral ministry. Normally when they get the lawyers and they've sold the house and they're separate, you know, normally they don't come back together at this point, okay? So I want to tell you, I believe there's hope and there's healing and restoration, Okay? You know, like, they went through a lot, and it took a lot of time after that. You know, just because you confess and agree, hey, we're going to try to work on this, you still got junk to sort through. It's not overnight. It didn't occur overnight. It won't go away overnight. But with God's help and His healing and His grace, I, I, believe, God can, I believe God can restore marriages here today. I believe He can do that. I also believe, man, if you're here, 
you know, as, a, as an individual, you know, uh, Deborah said she looked at a certain point in her life and she's like, this is not what I had planned for myself. This is not where I had planned to be. You know, if that's you this morning, there's always a way back, okay? There's always a way back through the cross, through making Jesus the center of your uh, of, of your home and, or, and, of, and of your heart. So just some great things that we can learn today. I'm going to just do some prayer in just a moment. I want you to stand wherever you're at. And let's just take a moment of worship. Then we're going to just do a time of prayer. And we're going to close and, and let you go. Just bow your heads with me across this place. If you're here today, maybe God's spoken to your life through worship, through the story here you got some areas of your life you need to give over to the Lord. Would you just raise your hand up and down really quick. Say, Pastor, would you pray for me this morning? i just got some areas of my life I need to give over to God. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any of you this morning just say, hey, I need some prayer for my home. Would you just pray over my home this morning? Just got some, I just need prayer over my home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'm not where I should be with the Lord. I just need to make some things right with God. Just wherever you're at, just raise your hand up and down. I just need to make some things right with God. Make Him number number one. Part of their story was, man, when they just begin to stray and get a little cold, some things happened in their life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray. I pray for those that raise their hands this morning need prayer, whatever it is. Lord, I pray for those that maybe their life is not where it should be. There's un, un, uncertain and unfortunate circumstances wherever they're at. But Jesus, you said if they build on the foundation that you will provide, that when winds and storms come, they're going to make it through it. And I pray for those. I pray that you would hear their prayer of, of, of confession and repentance this morning and you'd bring restoration to their life, Lord. I pray. I pray over every marriage and home that uh, has just got some difficulty, got some challenges in it. Lord, I pray for healing. I pray for restoration. Lord, I pray that they'll sell out to you, number one. They'll make you Lord of their home, Lord of their life. And God, that they'll bring healing and restoration that will come today, Lord, I pray. I pray over every one of those raised hands this morning. God, do that work in their heart. Do that work in their heart, Lord. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.